Hello students, today we shall discuss one of the important topic of the atomic structure that is De Broglie's concept. We know that light has two natures that is dual nature, they are wave nature as well as the particle nature means light is a particle, we have already discussed this one in the Planck's quantum theory, light is propagating in a particular direction in the form of the waves not continuously but discontinuously. Discontinuously in the sense there must be a certain type of the particles. So, each particle is called as the photon or quanta and its energy also we have already calculated that is E equals to H. A similar concept was given to the matter by De Broglie. According to the De Broglie, matter is also having the two natures. That means dual nature, they are wave nature as well as the particle nature. But one thing is, De Broglie did not prove the dual nature of the matter. It was proven by the Davison and Germer. So, in this Davison and Germer experiment, he sent an electronic beam. This is an electronic beam through a small slit, small hole. So, when electron beam was sent through a small slit, I will write this one as slit here. Then it was observed that there is a bending of these particle waves at the address of this slit. You know, this is called as a diffraction. Later, when they tried to get the electronic beam, onto a particular photographic plate, it was observed that the particles were moving like this and later they made certain type of these circles on the photographic plate. This is a pattern similar to the light. Then they said the electrons also are particles, but moving in the form of the waves. Then it was proven that the micro particles are having dual nature, both the wave nature as well as the particle nature. But whenever electron is moving in the form of the wave like this, see the electron is moving in this direction, it has the wave. The wave that is associated with the electron is called as the associated waves. Being in particle, electron must have certain momentum, mass into velocity. So, here a De Broglie tried to get the relation between the wavelength and the momentum and he proposed that these are inversely related to each other. Lambda of the wave is inversely proportional to momentum p and later this proportional symbol was replaced by using the constant that is lambda equals to h by p where h equals to Planck's constant whose value is 6.626 into 10 power minus 34 joule seconds and we know that momentum p equals to mass into velocity so it can be written as lambda equals to h upon m v and this particular uh, dual nature of the matter is applicable only in the case of the micro particles, not to the macro particles. This is only for the micro particles. Why it is not useful for the macro particles? Let us try to see. If we take a normal adult man whose mass is 75 kg and uh, Moving with a velocity, uh, let us take 20 kilometers per hour. Then the 75 kgs and 20 kilometers per hour is there. It has to be converted into the seconds because his H value is in the seconds. So 20 kilometers into seconds. And that two kilometers are to be converted again into the meters. So here velocity becomes 20 into 10 power 3 by r, r means 60 minutes into 60 seconds. When all these higher values are substituted at the denominator, then the lambda value must be 
at the order of 10 power minus 30 means it is almost negligible value so that is the reason why in the case of the macro particles uh, the lambda value is negligible hence we cannot see any electric waves but in the case of the micro particles their mass is may be very less but velocity will be very high so by uh, substituting these values we can get the a certain considerable value for the lambda now let us try to see how this particular de broglie's concept can be used in different conditions and different particles let us see first of all kinetic energy we know that kinetic energy equals to half mv square and let us try to multiply and divide uh, this side with m m divided by m so there will be no change in this value so we can write this equation as kinetic energy equals to mv whole square divided by 2m wherever mv is nothing but momentum here we have already discussed mv is nothing but the momentum so we can write here as kinetic energy is equals to momentum square divided by 2m and momentum can be calculated with 2m ke so this is one of the useful formula while calculating the momentum of the particle when it is having certain kinetic energy and mass and a similar thing can be done when you apply this one to the de broglie's concept then lambda equals to we know that h by p in the place of p you can substitute this one then we get the h upon root 2m ke so straight away we can get the lambda value by substituting this particular values now let us try to see uh, if a charged particle is accelerating from rest by applying voltage v so let us take a charged particle this is the charged particle and this particle has some charge q and it is moving by applying the voltage v because it is in the rest position and this concept is applicable only to the particles those are in the rest position so when a charged particle in the rest position having the q quantity of the charge so to move to make a move we need to apply certain amount of the voltage so when voltage is applied this charged particle start moving in a particular direction and has some kinetic energy so the kinetic energy difference means change in kinetic energy change in kinetic energy from this particular point to this particular point can be calculated by work energy theorem which actually discussed in the physics so change in kinetic energy equals to work done by applying the voltage so after applying the voltage certain amount of the work is done so we can call it as now change in kinetic energy is equal this is change in kinetic energy not pure kinetic energy so change in kinetic energy is equals to charge into voltage q into v so this formula is very helpful in solving the problems you must remember and now let's try to take this particular formula into the lambda form so we know that lambda equals to h upon root 2m ke and in the place of ke we can take the q into v so the formula can be written as lambda equals h upon 2m q into v where q is the charge of the particle v is the potential applied and this is valid only for the particles in rest position valid only for the particles in rest position now let's try to take some other special cases
So in this special case, let us take an electron because most of the time we deal with electron only. So for an electron, we know the certain values of the electron. Mass of the electron equals to 9.1 into 10 power minus 31 kg. And the quantity of the charge Q value is 1.6022 into 10 power minus 19 coulombs. So by applying these two values which are constants in this particular form. Because H is constant, 2 is constant now. And uh, mass of the electron is constant and the charge of the electron is also constant. So by applying these four values here, then we get another particular type of the form. That means lambda can easily be calculated for electron as lambda equals to root upon 150 by V angstroms. Even if you feel difficult in getting the value of root 150, then there is another one that is 12.27 by root V angstroms. So this is another best application or formula that can be used for the electron and this is only valid for electron. Why it is valid for electron? Because we substituted only electron values in this particular form to get this one. Okay. Now let us try to see some other questions regarding the de Broglie's concept which are very helpful for us. Let us solve the first question. If kinetic energy of a proton is increased 9 times, the wavelength of the de Broglie's wave associated with it would become. We know the formula initially that is lambda equals to h upon root 2mke. Let the values are lambda 1 initially and the kinetic energy is ke1. Mass of the particle remains same. Now later what did what they did they increased the kinetic energy by 9 times. So means lambda 2. Lambda 2 equals to h upon root 2m ke2. So this ke2 value is 9 times of the ke1. So we can write this equation as lambda 2 equals to h upon root 2m 9 ke1. And this root 9 value, if you bring it out, then it becomes lambda t equals to 1 third of h upon root 2m ke1. So, if you see this value, this is equals to the first value. Means lambda 2 value becomes 1 third of the initial value. So, the answer will be C. That is 1 third times, 1 by 3 times. Let us see the another question. Second question is an electron, a proton and an alpha particle have kinetic energies of 16E, 4E and E respectively. What is the qualitative order of their de Broglie wavelengths? So let us take the given particles here. Given particle is electron, proton and alpha particle. Proton means we know that it is H plus. Alpha particle means 2 He plus 2. Sorry, He plus 2. It is He plus 2. Let us take the mass of the electron as Me and mass of the proton is Mp and mass of the alpha particle is M alpha. We know that mass of the proton is equal to 1840 times the mass of electron and mass of the alpha particle is 4 times the mass of the proton. 4 times the mass of the proton in this sense, if you proton value if you substitute here 4 into 1840 into mass of the electron. Okay. And similarly, their kinetic energy values are also given. Electron kinetic energy is given as 16E. Whereas proton kinetic energy is given as 4E and alpha particle kinetic energy is given as capital E. Now let us try to take the form that is lambda equals to H upon root 2M Ke. So here H value root to 2 value are constant for all these particles. M and the kinetic energy values are not constant. So, lambda value basically depends on the mass and the kinetic energy values of 
these particles electron proton and alpha particles now let us try to get the product of mass and kinetic energy of these particles here mass of the electron is negligible we know that and 16e so mass and 16e here it is and when compare the mass of the electron and mass of the proton proton mass is 1840 times the mass of the electron means mass of the electron is almost 2000 times less than the mass of the proton so when the mass of the electron is 2000 times less than the mass of the proton then the lambda value will be very high uh, for the electron in comparison to the proton and alpha particle so here we can write lambda electron is high in comparison to both of these particles because their masses are very high now let us try to take the proton and alpha particle and let us try to multiply the mass and kinetic energy of these two particles mass of the proton is mp and its kinetic energy is 4e so its total value is mp 4e and in the case of the helium plus 2 means alpha particle its mass is m alpha and its kinetic energy is e and m alpha means 4 mp so let us try to substitute that value 4 mp capital e and here also it is nothing but 4 mp capital e so their mass and kinetic energy values are same in such case lambda value becomes equal so lambda of a proton is equals to lambda of alpha part hence option a is correct let us see the another question third question now an electron practically at rest is initially accelerated through a potential difference of 100 volts it then has de Broglie wavelength lambda 1 angstroms it then get retarded through 19 volts and then has wavelength lambda 2 angstroms a further retardation through 32 volts changes the wavelength to lambda 3 angstroms what is lambda 3 minus lambda 2 divided by lambda 1 let's try to solve this question if you read this question clearly there is a particle electron is practically at the rest position okay so for electron we can apply the concept lambda 1 is equals to under root of 150 by v angstroms and they said initial potential difference is 100 volts after that 19 volts is reduced then the lambda value is lambda 2 again 32 volts is reduced then lambda value is lambda 3 so it is it becomes very easy for us now so initial lambda 1 value root 150 by v angstroms let us try to substitute this v value voltage value that is 100 so it becomes now 150 by 100 angstrom do not try to solve it here automatically they get cancelled later now lambda 2 lambda 2 value is obtained only after there is a decrease in the 19 volts from the initial value initial value is 100 volts from that 19 volts have been reduced so it becomes now 81 volts so lambda 2 equals to under root of 150 by v angstroms now it is equals to root 150 by 81 angstroms now lambda 3 is equals to root 150 by v voltage angstroms here now here they said one minute i'll erase this one angstroms now 150 as it is we take but voltage is different now from this 89 again they reduce 39 volts then it is equals to 49 volts i think 32 volts sorry 32 volts is reduced so it becomes now 49 volts then here we can write 49 angstroms now they uh, they were asking this type of the relationship uh, for the given values let's try to get so lambda 3 minus lambda 2 divided by lambda 1 is equal to lambda 3 value is root 150 by 49 minus lambda 2 value 150 by 81 divided by lambda 1 value root 150 by 100 so root 150 automatically get cancels so we get here 1 upon root 49 minus 1 upon root 81 
divide by 1 upon root 100 and these values can easily be obtained 1 upon root 49 means 7 minus this is 9 1 upon 9 divided by 1 upon 10. Now by solving this we get the value as this value approximately nearly equals to 20 by 63. So lambda 3 minus lambda 2 divided by lambda 1 value is equals to this one. Dear students hope you understand. If you understand please do not forget to subscribe the channel and try to share it with your friends. Thank you.